Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Ritik and this is Ritik Updates. In this video, we are going to see about the deadliest sniper ever lived. Yes, white death. Let's get into the video. The real name of the white death is Simo Haiha. He was born on the 17th December 1905. He was born in a farm in an area called Rojarvi. His mother and father were farmer and he grew up as a farmer too. At the age of 12, his grandparents bought him a rifle named M19 bolt action sniper. They gave him as a gift and he used to use it a lot like for hunting birds like that. He liked hunting, it was a hobby for him. He liked to shoot everything like that. Like every man did in that period of time, he served one year to the military. At the age of 20, he entered military and trained. He used a rifle called M28 Bar 30 rifle and 9mm Suomi SMG. He used those two weapons to train and what shocked the military persons there is was its accuracy. He was extremely accurate with his shots. He hit a target 16 times 500 feet long. In just one minute, this shocked everybody there. After finishing his one year of training, he went back to his home and continued farming. He liked farming but he just waited for another opportunity to come to go and prove his skills to the military one more time. That opportunity come. It was the second world war during 1939 and 1940 in the winter war Soviet Union versus the Finland. The Soviet Union were 750,000 people. But the Finland were only 300,000. So, the Finland government said everybody who trained military for one year, they asked everybody them to come and join this war. So, Simo Haiha went to the war too. This time, he brought his own arm, his own gun named M91 bolt action sniper, as I said. He bring that to the war, but in the military there, they gave him another advanced rifle, but he refused to take it. And his own gun didn't have a telescopic scope, so they suggested him to put a telescope. Even if the people there suggested him to put a telescopic on his telescopic scope on his weapon, he refused. He thought that. His accuracy were good when there weren't any scope. He liked to shoot in the iron sight. Even if the Finland had a small troop, the advantage was the snow. The weather was snowing. So what they used as a tactic is the Finland military let the Soviet Union come in their base. So what happens is when the military of Soviet Union comes in, they wouldn't be able to, to find food and water. You can't carry food and water for many days. Like in cinemas, the war don't last for just one day. It lasts for months, even sometimes year. This one lasted approximately 100 days. So Finland had an advantage over this by the food and the water. Simo Haiha could do 10, 15, 20, 30, even 40 kills in a day. This was a lot in that time because to kill one person, a person has to take a survey. To kill one person, you need at least 7,000 bullets. And during the Second World War, it went up to 13,500 bullets. So imagine to kill one person, how much bullet you need and how you can kill 40 people in 
those bullets. But the highest skill of Simo Haya in one day was 40. The days goes on and on, Simo Haya is known very popular in the Soviet Union military. At this point of time, it was the Soviet Union versus Simo Haya. Now, in the Soviet Union, Simo Haya is known as the White Death. Why was he known like that? He wore full white uniform that camouflaged him in the snow. This sniper was extremely unbeatable by the Soviet Union snipers, everybody like that. Why was he so unbeatable? He used lots of tactics. I'm gonna say it one by one. One is that he didn't use a telescopic scope that helped him because in the daylight, when a person uses a telescopic scope, the sun will reflect on and it will be easier to catch the person. But since Simo Haya didn't use a scope, they couldn't catch him. And normally in the winter time, if you breathe out, there will be a fog coming out from your mouth and nose. But how did Simo Haya didn't have that? He will take he will take snow and put it in his mouth. Imagine it was minus twenty to minus forty degrees forty degrees. Imagine putting snow in the mouth. And he breathed very slowly. You will take a long breath in and will let the breath out very slowly. And then you will pour water on the ground where he is and put his rifle on there so when he shoots the recoil wouldn't come back and eat him. Simo Haya moves very slowly. Like, like in one hour you will just move one inch. Imagine in 60 minutes just one inch you would move. This helped Simo Haya very camouflage and unbeatable to find even. So the Soviet Union wouldn't be able to find him to kill him. Now the Soviet Union's only goal was to find Simo Haya and kill him to win the war. And one day they sent, they sent tons of tanks to find him. And when a guy found him in a tank, he would go up and go up to see Simo Haya, but with the accuracy of Simo Haya, he would kill that man and the other friend in the tank will f would fire hundreds and hundreds of bombs over Simo Haya, but none of them hit him because he didn't move even an inch, he stayed where he was. Thinking the man, he thought that Simo Haya was dead. But and this news spread over the Soviet Union. They were very happy to hear that Simo Haya was dead, but, but he wasn't. The next day he was still alive. This was a big surprise for the Soviet Union. Another day, another skill-capped sniper was sent to find him. And he, success and he successfully found Simo Haya and shoots him. Yes, a bullet it's his left jaw and goes through his right. This, this extremely wounded Simo Haya and he was out, and he was hospitalized then. After some day when Simo Haya woke up, he was found in an hospital. He didn't participate in the entire war, but he did his best contribution ever did by another by another sniper ever lived. The doctor said that he couldn't speak anymore, but after 26 surgeries in his jaw, he was able to speak and prove the doctors wrong. But he was extremely wounded in this part of his jaw. And after some years, when Finland, another country, partnered together to fight against the Soviet Union once more, one more time, they asked Simo Haya to to be part of this war, but he refused. Why? Because he said that when when the Soviet Union came to attack their country, he defended, but but he doesn't want to go and attack another country. And the rest of his life, he lived very peacefully, calmly like that in his farm and enjoyed his life the entire time. 
he died in the first April tw 2002 and this was the end of the story but the kills he did was amazing he did approximately 505 kills officially but unofficially they say that he did almost 800 kills this was the end of this crazy legacy hope you like this video don't forget to like if you do and subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss out another video like this goodbye